Hi, Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today we're going to be looking at this little uh, development board called a Pioneer 4. It features a PSOC 4 chip, which is a programmable system on chip, and it features not just digital like we're used to, but it features also analog, such as op amps, uh, uh, AD converters, uh, muxes, audio mux or analog muxes, and so you can change the gain on your op amp by bringing it out to some resistors, that kind of thing. So uh, it, what I like about, well, first off, I love development boards because you can get up and running right away without having to make a mistake on your first PC board. Uh, it's not like I've done that. Um, but also then, because I can include a certain number of analog parts, including things like Watchdog and stuff, um, that means I can put the whole design on here and not have to build something on a solderless breadboard or later when I want to use it again, rebuild what was on the solderless breadboard. It's, I can download everything in one shot. So it does also fit Arduino -y sh um, shields, and so we'll see uh, what all we can do here. Today we're just going to go through the, all the steps real quick to program it so that you see one of everything and just know it's there. And uh, in future videos, hopefully we'll build something actually kind of intricate or interesting at least. So again, Bill Hurd from Hackaday, and let's uh, see what we can do with this. Okay, so here's the Pioneer 4 development board with the piece for the PSOC 4. Here's uh, this shows the alignment of how an Ethernet uh, shield would go, an Arduino shield, uh, if we were to put one on there. Also, here is the PSOC 4 itself, and then this PSOC, this is a PSOC 5, and it's used to uh, act as the bootloader, take care of the programming and some uh, other housekeeping and it's kind of common these days on developer boards to see a second device in there assisting so that the first device can act more native but still be able to load code and do some other things okay i did want to uh, show you the uh, integrated development environment here uh, real quick before we actually get, take and burn our own part our own sample design here just to show all the pieces from beginning to end um, but there's too much to show, but there's some cool things I want to show you here real quick. So here in the center is our uh, content. This gets pushed or pulled by the vendor. What I like about it is we do have the app notes and the data sheets in a handy place, so I do appreciate that. Off in the left, we have our design files. These are both schematics and main.c, uh, main main.h living together, which demonstrates you know, the fact that we've got software and hardware under our design here. And there is uh, even some of the modules you can implement them as hardware or as software or a mixture of both. So it's, it's truly a hybrid uh, type thing we got going here. If I were to show you the examples real quick, uh, let's see if I can bring that up for you. Here we go. And uh, this, if you if you were to look through here, there's a lot of different kinds of product projects that you can start. And so uh, if we do take a look here at the schematic, uh, here's the schematic like you might see, with the exception that uh, you know that this is going in a chip, and it's got analog. You know, so I can bring in parts, I can hook them up, uh, I can scale gains. Here, here I can uh, uh, connect external parts and set gains, as you see here. So, and here's a MUX, so this is a, a remote control gain device, right? So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. If we take a look over here then on the right, we can take a look, and I don't know if you can see all of that, um, but I wanted to show you just some of the kinds of parts, uh, op amps, comparators, DACs, digital analog converters, I squared C, we've got digital functions, UARTs, quadrature decoders, PWM, all kinds of flops, flips, registers, character displays, and, and then we've got system things like clock and uh, bootloader and interrupt management. Uh, under tools here, we do have uh, a DMA wizard that guides you through making a DMA compatible device. I, I, I kind of I, I look forward to trying that because that, that sounds very cool. So, but this is it in a nutshell. This is the IDE. So um, let's go over back over to the bench and let's uh, burn apart here real quick. All right, setup is extremely easy as you might expect. All we need is our development board, which plugs into the USB cable that came with it. And I've already preloaded the software on the computer, so we got our monitor down, get our keyboard out, and that's it. We're ready to go. Okay, here's our top design I chose. Now, I got this off of Newark Element 14. They had a uh, 
Uh, they had a promo of 100 circuits in 100 days using the PSOC 4, the, the Pioneer 4 board here. Uh, and so I grabbed number two in the list. And it's just an example of the capacitive slider that's built into this. And it's just going to make the uh, color of the light of the LED change. So here, the, here's one of these uh, devices that doesn't have any visible pins, but I'm sure it's plugged into the firmware. Uh, um, in, into the uh, assignments there and so the values are coming in um, this is probably half half code and a little bit of hardware here um, so here's our two LEDs and here's our cap sense and when we're ready we're going to go ahead and do a clean and build okay right now it's doing a fitting I know that because I see the word fit in the name it's a couple minutes later and the design is done. It's been uh, compiled and then it's been uh, fitted into uh, the programmable part of this device. Uh, here's our schematic again, but if we go to, uh, to resources, with these are the pin assignments as we talk, but then you can also see the analog usage uh, and some other things, how the clocks play out. And, and some other things. And again, real common with uh, all the FPGAs, we have our uh, clocks, pages, and all those things. Only there we're dealing with real small clocks sometimes, real fast clocks. So the only thing next is uh, to see this thing in operation. So here's the compiled and uploaded version. And uh, what it does is as we put our finger on the slider, it's changing it from green to, to red back to green. Now, I realize that the camera may not really do that justice because that's a pretty deep red and a, and a pretty bright green right now. So on, oh, And it keeps the last color you touch. That's it for this video. I uh, want to do another one where we actually do a design and show you uh, in more detail all of the steps because again they're useful almost in any uh, IDE you use. There, there'll be something similar to one of the steps that we'll use in this IDE. So and and hopefully there's you can see um, how we how we can widen our toolbox and have different answers to the same uh, to the same problem. In this case, we can reuse code. You know the C code. We we can fit a uh, a shield to it. It's it's you know the same processor only different. And how many times have you done a uh, one of these small designs? You say oh, I got to glue on a power supply, two op amps, and a couple filters. It, or you're doing it on a solderless breadboard, and when you're done, you uh, just, what do you do? You take the breadboard apart because, you, you know, there's no longevity to it. Here you can store a design on your disk and come back to it and pull it out, and the comparators come online or the analog to digital converters and whatnot. So, um, yeah, I was looking at doing a, 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 a fan speed controller with temperature probes uh, for our next project on this, and uh, if we go that way, I'm sure it'll be uh, very detailed. As I said, that's it for this time. Uh, if there are any questions, feel free to post or to email me. Uh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll build it into a, the next video or answer directly to it, depending on what it is. And uh, with that said, Bill Heard from Hackaday. Keep on hacking.